Hi, this is Tony, and I wanted to welcome you to my new midweek episode. Going to try it for six months. It is called Zespresso, and it is just a little midweek slice of inspiration featuring the best Zestology guests. Uh, Got to thank my mate Ed for the title, Zespresso. We did a newsletter poll a couple of months ago and had loads of good suggestions. We did consider calling it Slice, you know, Zestology, Slice, there's a bit of a connection there. But Zespresso won the day, so thanks, Ed. And this week, it's Dave Asprey. As I say, we'll try it out for a few months. And if you're missing Zestology, it'll be back the full episode on Monday. But every Thursday, we'll do a Zespresso. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of Bulletproof, the man who is a New York Times bestseller, and more importantly than that, he's got us all putting delicious big blobs of butter in our coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dave Asprey. Uh, Did you realize how popular biohacking is in this country? Did you have an idea of how big kind of your movement and the movement of biohacking is becoming? I I mean, I know it's getting big globally, but I haven't seen this much interest in the UK uh, so far. So thanks for showing up. I'm I'm honored. It's cool. And this is our movement. Anyone's a biohacker when you start paying attention to stuff. So I kind of pushed the button on the word. There's there's a lot of like personal work that people are doing. Yeah, the word and also, you know, I think any great movement has to have a good gimmick. Let's start by talking about the coffee. There's been, I think it's fair to say that Brits are slightly more skeptical than Americans in general. And there has been some skepticism. Is that fair to say in general? We're slightly less willing to adopt things. There has been some skepticism in the press. The Guardian said it tasted bitter and oily. Um, But there's a lot of people here who love it as well. Is there a sense that this is now almost becoming mainstream, do you think? Well, it was the Telegraph who said that the Bulletproof diet was everything wrong with America in a diet. So I I thought that was a better quote. (laughs) That's because the British press is very trustworthy and credible, right? (laughs) What about Bulletproof coffee for kind of athletic performance? Um, This last weekend, uh, I got a picture from the Bulletproof Coffee Shop in Santa Monica um, from this guy. I think he's well known. It was uh, was David Beckham. (laughs) He he came there twice. He came there one day and came back the next day. So I know he's at least tried it and he was cool with having his photo taken. So uh, unfortunately, I wasn't there to meet him. And also, we sponsored the LA Galaxy, where most of the uh, UK soccer pros go. Uh, when I guess they're done here. <laughs> yeah, when they're past it a little right, bit. But right, yeah. But it's, it's a start. It's American yeah. soccer, right? It's going to happen. I'm convinced that right now, brain octane, or in the UK, thanks to the regulatory people, high octane oil is the number one source of exogenous ketones in the world's diet right now because it's the oil that converts most quickly to ketones. So, of course, athletic people want to do it. Now, big wave surfers are all over this stuff. Like, oh, I can get more energy per cycle of my uh, of my mitochondria, which might matter when there's a wave holding you underwater for a while and things like that. So I'm seeing it in strength athletics. I'm seeing it in endurance athletics. But the mistake that some people are making, in my opinion, is they're going into ketosis and staying there forever. The cyclical ketosis approach that I outlined in the book seems to work better for mm-hmm. most people. and. If you have cancer, and if you're one of those genetic people where you just love it and you feel it and you're never good on carbs, that's cool. But I think that that's the exception, not the rule. 